Still we are expecting cold weather for the next couple of days, but then we'll have a slow warm up and we'll likely see temperatures by the weekend reach into the upper 30s and 40s. And we are starting to see those showers move toward the lake shore, so you will notice. So um, growing up in Chicago, how did you know, how did you grow up? Uh, so that's actually a good question. So I grew up, you know, single, single mother, household, little mother. I have uh, three other siblings. I'm the youngest of four. You know, and so I grew up in a suburb of Chicago. Maywood is the name. Uh, we grew up sort of low income. So, you know, there were times where we didn't have electricity or mm -hmm. food or even gas or whatever the case may be. But fortunately, you know, I had a lot of good people around me that sort of, you know, provided when my mother couldn't or, you know, were there to sort of support the whole family when things maybe were tough. And so that was a part of, you know, a lot of my motivation to be successful. And success is, you know, how you measure it. Everybody has a different measure of success. But I knew that I wanted to make sure I would be in a better place by the time I was an adult compared to where, you know, where I started out. And everybody wants to just, you know, improve in life, whether it's your life situation or just, I think, in general. So, you know, started out in a low-income household, but I was always good at school. And fortunately, I was able to learn a lot from the mistakes of other people who came before me, like my older brother, love him to death. And, you know, it happens to anybody, you know, he had a kid as he was leaving high school. And, you know, that's, that's a blessing and it's right. But sometimes dealing with the other person in a relationship can be a pain, like the baby mother or the baby father, you know, they can drive you crazy with their behavior. So I knew, I was like, I don't want to do that. And then I knew I wanted to make sure that I uh, reached my goal. And since I had an interest in weather, you know, that's so unique. Uh, most people would get like, you want to be what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's right. what I want to be. And the nice thing about it is that they would say, you want to be what? It's like, oh, that's cool. You should go for it. So even though I grew up in, you know, a low-income community, low-income household, I never felt discouraged about reaching my goals. Okay. So in elementary school, I worked hard. In high school, I worked hard and played three sports, football, wrestling, and track. So that kept me busy and out of trouble. And if you know me, I am not gangster. Like I am not, like I'm, I'm not, that's not, that's not the life I live. Uh, but again, I was able to be around good people to sort of keep me on that path. And, uh, and then, you know, I was grateful that I got a chance to go to Penn State uh, because I did well enough in high school, I got a scholarship to go there. So it covered my tuition for four, four years, basically. And if had not had it not been for that scholarship, I may not have been able to go to Penn State to pursue meteorology because it's just an expensive university, but it's a quality university too. Mm -hmm. So, and I spent four years at Penn State, and uh, I'm sure many people always think about, you know, the distractions that you can run into while you're at college, whether it's parties, yeah. having a little too much fun, staying out late, whatever the case may be. But again, I always knew because of how I grew up and how I started, it's like, this is where I wanna be. So I'm gonna do everything I can to try to get there. Now I have fun, but you wouldn't see me out every single night. Like I would be out on weekends with friends and that would be pretty much it. And also growing up, my mother, don't let her catch me doing homework on a Sunday night at like 8 p.m. Knowing that school is Monday and it's due Monday. She yelled at me so much that throughout most of my college career, I would have sort of, you know, issues with doing work on Sundays. So I was like, I should have had this done Saturday. Uh, so she trained that <laughs> really well <laughs> in me. Now I'm a little more lax with that whole thing. But, uh, you know, she helped give me some of those standards that helped me have success in undergrad and helped me eventually get to uh, grad school at Cornell where I worked hard as well and, and pursued more, you know, just learning more about meteorology. Now, one of the reasons why I went to Penn State with the goal of being a broadcast meteorologist. But when I was there, I got a chance to get exposed to the entire field. And with that, I learned that it's a lot of other opportunities within meteorology you can take advantage of. So that led me to grad school because I wanted to know, OK, well, what else can I learn that maybe I didn't necessarily get when I was at Penn State? And I learned a lot. But then when I was in grad school, I realized, OK, well, my first love was broadcast meteorology. So I really want to pursue this. But at least now, you know, I have this master's degree or I'm working on this master's degree. I'll basically, you know, have any opportunity I want, uh, let's say, if TV didn't work out. And that was the one thing anybody who wants to enter TV should know. It's not promise. It is not guaranteed. You can be the best person in the world, but they still may not choose you because you may not be the right fit at the right time. Mm -hmm. So that can be the painful part about pursuing opportunities in this field. But if you work hard, eventually 
you should get that chance or you may figure out that you might want to go in a different direction. And that's fine too. So I went to grad school, learned a lot, but then circled back to TV. And while I was in grad school, I got the chance to do what they say freelance at a small TV station working on camera as the meteorologist. Mm -hmm. So every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, instead of going home, I would say, okay, well, I want this experience. So I would stick around and work the holidays. And that same experience of recording things and working on air in a small town outside of Cornell ultimately gave me the opportunity to get here to Cleveland. Uh, but back to Cornell. So I'm in Cornell, working hard, freelancing. Uh, toward the end of my time on campus, I applied for an internship at Good Morning America. And um, that's how eventually I got in there, did well in my internship, and then a couple of months later, I got offered a full-time job. Um, like I said, it was a tough experience, but it was a lot of fun too. And through all of that, I eventually made it to TV. So how long did it take me? I started uh, undergrad 2004, finished college at Penn State 08, and then officially finished my degree at Cornell in 2013. But by then I was working on TV. So it took about, you know, maybe like eight to 10 years to actually reach my goal of full-time on at work. So I'm grateful, but that's just a part of my journey, especially, you know, growing up wasn't easy. We had tough times, but I was able to make it through and I'm very grateful for that. Wow, interesting story, man. <clears throat> and that's one thing about single mothers, you know what I'm saying? They, they, sh they, sh they just so very, they, they very, very determined. Yeah. They want you to be the best that that you could be, cause you know my mother. You know what I'm saying my mother. I love my mom. My mom always told me, man. I'm a, mama. <laughs> I'm a mama's boy, man. Shout out to all the single mothers, man. Because like I said, man, um, they play they they play like the most toughest roles. Because guess what? You gotta play the man and the woman. You know what I'm saying in in, in your life. Yeah, you know, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy. So I definitely give it up to my mother as well because I, it wasn't like she only had one child you know she had four children mm -hmm. and uh she had to figure out how to raise all of us and you know simple things like finding a babysitter like right, that can right. be painful to a single mother so i definitely give my mother credit because she put in a lot of work and it wasn't easy okay so how many siblings you got so i have uh three other siblings two sisters older brother and i'm the youngest oh. so um you was closer to your mama than most. Yeah, I, I got a story about that. Uh, let me hear this. All right, so here's the story. Okay, so <laughs> me and my brother, we shared a room when we were coming up. Before he graduated from high school, you know, we shared a room. <laughs> and um, it's crazy. So I, uh, I wanted to watch The Three Stooges on TV, right? But he was watching something else. So I went. And I told my mother, I was like, hey, I want to watch Three Stooges. So she came in and she said, Daryl, uh, change the Three Stooges. Marcus wants to watch it. <laughs> that man got so upset that he literally moved out of the apartment. Get out of here. <laughs> he packed his stuff up in the bag. He went over to the payphone, but they still have payphones, right? Oh now I'm God. making it sound like I'm old. But he went over to the payphone. He called my grandparents. And said he wanted to live with them because he didn't want to stay <laughs> anymore. It might, it might have been other. I might have just annoyed him. You know how the little brothers are to the bigger brothers. Uh, so he moved out for a little bit, and then eventually he moved back in. But I had never, you know, I never would have thought he would have moved out. It was weird having this big room now by myself too. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's the story. Wow, he probably was like, he was probably like, man, oh uh, man, I, I bet you was like, yeah, I'm glad I said something. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, I definitely want to give a shout out to Recognize for coming in and doing this interview. I also want to give a shout out to all the viewers who are watching this and taking the time to check out their cool website and a lot of their cool videos. And also, I want to give a shout out to all the Channel 3 watchers out there, the Channel 3 weather watchers who support me, Betsy, Holly, and Greg. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we hope you all continue to sort of tune in and watch us here on Channel 3.